Hey guys, welcome back. This is Dr. Rajeshwar from YR Pharma Tube. In the previous video, we discussed the acid-based titrations. If you did not watch the video, hit the i button on top right of this video to watch it. For the other topics of pharmaceutical analysis, click on the links given in the description below this video. In this video, we shall discuss the different types and some commonly used solvents used in non-aqueous titrations. The lowry brownsted theory of acids and bases can be applied equally well to the reactions occurring during acid-based titrations in non-aqueous solvents. This is because their approach considers an acid as any substance which will tend to donate a proton and a base as a substance which will accept a proton. Substances which give poor endpoints due to being weak acids or bases in aqueous solution will frequently give far more satisfactory endpoints when titrations are carried out in non-aqueous media. An additional advantage is that many substances which are insoluble in water are sufficiently soluble in organic solvents to permit their titration in these non-aqueous media. In the lowry brownsted theory, any acid that is Hb as shown in the equation is considered to dissociate in solution to give a proton that is H plus and a conjugate base that is B minus while any base B will combine with a proton to produce a conjugate base that is Hb plus. The ability of substances to act as acids or bases will depend very much upon the nature of the solvent system which is employed. Non-aqueous solvents are classified into four groups. Number one, aprotic solvents. Number two, protophilic solvents. Number three, protogenic solvents. And number four, amphiprotic solvents. Number one, aprotic solvents. Aprotic solvents include those substances which may be considered to be chemically neutral and virtually unreactive under the conditions employed. Carbon tetrachloride and benzene come in this group. They possess low dielectric constants, they do not cause ionization in solutes and they do not undergo reactions with acids and bases. Aprotic solvents are frequently used to dilute reaction mixtures while taking no part in the overall process. Number 2. Protophilic solvents Protophilic solvents are substances such as liquid ammonia, amines and ketones which possess a high affinity for protons. The overall reaction taking place can be represented as shown in the equation here. The equilibrium in this reversible reaction will be greatly influenced by the nature of the acid and that of the solvent. Weak acids are normally used in the presence of strongly protophilic solvents as their acidic strengths are then enhanced and then become comparable to those of strong acids. This is referred to as the leveling effect. Number 3. Protogenic solvents Protogenic solvents are acidic in nature and readily donate protons. Anhydrous acids such as hydrogen fluoride and sulfuric acid fall in this category. Because of their strength and ability to donate protons, they enhance the strength of weak acids. And number four, amphiprotic solvents. Amphiprotic solvents consist of liquids such as water, alcohols and weak organic acids which are slightly ionized and combine both protogenic and protophilic properties in being able to donate and to accept protons. Thus, acetic acid or ethanoic acid displays acidic properties in dissociating to produce protons. The acetate ion so formed can very readily give up its proton to react with a base. A weak base, therefore, will have its basic properties enhanced and as a consequence, titrations between weak acids and perchloric acid can frequently be readily carried out using acetic acid as a solvent. In general, strongly protophilic solvents lead to the equilibrium of equation being forced to the right hand side. This effect is so powerful that in such solvents all acids act as if they were of similar strength. The converse of this occurs with strongly protogenic solvents which cause all bases to act as if they were a similar strength. Solvents which act in this way are known as leveling solvents. Determination of non-aqueous solvents are of importance for substances which may give poor endpoints in normal aqueous titrations and for substances which are not soluble in water. 
they are also of particular value for determining the proportions of individual components in mixtures of either acids or of bases. These differential titrations are carried out in solvents which do not exert a leveling effect. Weist indicators may be used to establish individual endpoints as in traditional acid-based titrations. Potentiometric methods of endpoint detection are also used extensively, especially for highly colored solutions. Non-aqueous titrations have been used to quantify mixtures of primary, secondary and tertiary amines for studying sulfonamides, mixtures of purines and for many other organic amino compounds and salts of organic acids. Some commonly used solvents for non-aqueous titrations. A very large number of both inorganic and organic solvents have been used for non-aqueous determinations, but a few have been used more frequently than the most. Some of the most widely applied solvent systems are discussed here. In all the instances, pure dry analytical reagent quality solvents should be used to assist in obtaining sharp endpoints. Number 1. Glacial Estic Acid Glacial estic acid, also known as ethanoic acid, is by far the most frequently employed solvent for this purpose. Before it is used, it is advisable to check the water content, which may be between 0.1 and 1% and to add just sufficient estic anhydride to convert any water to the acid. The acid may be used by itself or in conjunction with other solvents such as acetic anhydride, acetonitrile and nitromethane. Number 2. Acetonitrile, also known as methyl cyanide or cyanomethane. Acetonitrile is frequently used with other solvents such as chloroform and phenol and particularly with acetic acid. It enables very sharp endpoints to be obtained in the titration of metal acetates when titrated particularly with perchloric acid. Number 3. Alcohol it has been found that determinations of salts of organic acids and especially of soaps are best carried out in solvent mixtures of glycols and alcohols or of glycols and hydrocarbons. The most common combinations of this type of ethylene glycol that is dihydroxyethane with propane 2 ol or butane 1 ol. The combinations provide admirable solvent power for both the polar and non-polar ends of the molecule. Another suitable solvent system is methanol and benzene. Number 4. Dioxane Dioxane is another popular solvent which is often used in place of glacial acetic acid when mixtures of substances are to be quantified. Unlike acetic acid, dioxane is not a leveling solvent and separate endpoints are normally possible corresponding to the individual components in the mixtures. And number 5. Dimethylformamide Dimethylformamide is a protophilic solvent which is frequently employed for titrations between benzoic acid and amines, for example, although endpoints may sometimes be difficult to obtain. This is the list of references followed for the lesson. That's all in this video, the solvents used in non-aqueous titrations. In the next lesson, we will discuss on the acidimetry and alkalimetric type of titrations. Till then, never stop learning and never stop watching my videos. Thank you for watching this video.